Hi everyone, my name is Ayana and I'm a garden interpreter at Royal Botanical Gardens. It's mid-afternoon and someone asks, would you like a cup of tea? For some that might be a good strong cup of black tea, for others that might be a soothing cup of mint tea. But in reality, tea can only be made with the leaves of the Camellia sinensis plant. Otherwise, you are drinking a tea saint or a herbal tea. Tea has a long and rich history. Let's take a look at where and when it was invented. Tea harvested from the Camellia sinensis plant originated in China around 2700 BC. Today, tea is grown around the world in thousands of estate tea gardens, resulting in many flavorful variations. Teas are harvested three times a year, in spring, summer, and autumn. Only the fresh growth, two leaves and a bud of the plant, is picked between harvests to ensure proper growth for the plant. Like wines, many teas take their names from the district in which they are grown. For example, Darjeeling tea comes from the town of Darjeeling in India. While there are more than 1,500 varieties of tea available worldwide, all teas can be divided into six different types. White, yellow, green, oolong, black, and pu'er. The differences in chemical composition, color, taste, and aroma are created by controlling the degree of oxidization during the process. Let's take a look at some of those categories. White tea uses new emerging leaf buds that are pale green with very fine hairs, which are then dried immediately to stop fermentation. The leaves are picked when they are young, just as the leaves are beginning to bud from the plant and shortly thereafter. The young leaves and buds are covered with a fine layer of white hairs, which are highly valued. Processing the tea so as not to lose the hairs is very important. As such, white tea is more of an expensive tea variety. The leaves are plucked and sun-dried and not allowed to ferment as with green and oolong teas. This method creates a tea that has a light, fruity, and sweet flavor. Many describe the taste profile as floral. White teas can be brewed for one to five minutes with near boiling water. Generally, smaller leaves require less brew time while larger leaves take longer. Green tea has full leaves, typically steamed or boiled and then dried to stop fermentation. Brewed green tea should be green, light tan, or yellow in color. Pan-fired leaves result in a grassy and toasted flavor, while steamed leaves taste more vegetal and have hints of seaweed and sweetness. When brewed properly, green tea should have a light color and a minor astringent flavor. There are many different varieties of green tea. Here are a few of the significant varieties. Chinese green tea is pan-fired or dried in rotating drums to avoid the oxidation process. Green tea leaves can be fired multiple times depending on the blend and different heat methods, including hot air, gas flames, and charcoal, which are used to develop specific flavors. Dragon pearls are different varieties of teas expertly hand rolled into balls. Green teas make for great dragon pearls. A similar variety is gunpowder green tea, which maintains freshness and flavor longer thanks to its rolled, rolled pearl state, which unfurls when brewed. Japanese green teas are characterized by their steamed leaves. Japanese green teas have sweet and vegetal flavors, which have more of a characteristic like green shade when brewed. Sencha is an example of this variety. Matcha is known for its use in the Japanese tea ceremony. Matcha is the newest tea craze. It's everything about green tea, but in a powder form. You get the caffeine without the dreaded drop, and you have 10 times more antioxidants than regular tea, and proven fat burning benefits. Green teas are generally brewed with near boiling water for two to three minutes. Oolong tea falls in between green and black tea as it is semi-oxidized. During processing, it is allowed to oxidize for a short period before being exposed to heat, and therefore it retains a higher polyphenol content than black tea. The leaves are rolled into balls with a tail. Oolong generally has a more complex flavor than white and green tea, but is not as strong a taste as black tea. An example of this is blue unicorn oolong. Oolong teas can be brewed with boiling or near boiling water for one to two minutes, depending on the variety of tea leaf. Black teas are often named after the region that they come from. During processing, the leaves are cut and bruised, disrupting the cell structure, which allows for all the leaf juices containing polyphenols and enzymes to mix together, creating complete oxidation. 
As a result, black teas contain very few polyphenols, as they are mostly converted to theoflavins and theorubogens. Theorubogens give black tea its distinct red-brown color and stronger flavor. Darjeeling tea is a black tea and is considered the champagne of teas. The region of Darjeeling is in northeast India among the Himalayans and in the state of West Bengal. Just as champagne can only come from Champagne, France, Darjeeling tea can only be called this if it comes from Darjeeling, India. Black teas are brewed with boiling water for three to five minutes, depending on its variety. Huer teas use both the Camellia sinensis and the Camellia assemica leaves. It is designated as a protected product by the Chinese government due to its very long history. Huer tea is processed in a special way to encourage microbial fermentation after the leaves are dried. And because of that, it ages more dynamically than any other tea out there. Fresh leaves get tossed in giant hand walks long enough to halt the tea's oxidation, but not so long as to drive off all moisture and kill natural bacteria. The tea is then left to dry in the sun, but the bacteria live on, and over years and decades, they'll help completely transform the tea from a fresh, bitter green into something more dark, mellow, and rich. Pu'er teas often come in a disc-like shape called a cake. A cake of pu'er is in constant state of change, and as you chip away leaves to drink over the months and years, no two brews will taste exactly the same. Some pu'er is delicious to drink when fresh. It's vegetal and fragrant with gentle bitterness. Other pu'er needs years of aging for profound bitterness or harsh smoky flavors to mellow out into something smooth, sweet, and dignified. Pu'er can be brewed for a short time, 15 to 60 seconds, with boiling or near boiling water. I hope you enjoyed learning about the history and different varieties of tea. There are so many teas out there to try, so put on the kettle, brew a pot, and have a terrific day.